So basically I have challenged myself this month to be able to do about, I think it's three Valentine's Day themed projects. And one of these is actually a, a continuation of a project that I'm pretty sure I started last year or something like that. And that has kind of metamorphosized a bunch since its uh, first iteration. Uh, so the original inspiration for this first project that I'm giving you all was this Vivian Westwood knit dress. So uh, I wanted to challenge myself with that to like do it without a pattern. And my first iteration, like these are the remains and I literally hated it. I think it's so ugly, um, <laughs> was this. So I had um, kind of thrown this to the wayside, but at the same time, I was also working on creating my own crochet pattern for the Lirika Matoshi cutout heart sweater as well, and um, had a little bit more success with that specifically. And so just focused on doing that. And as I worked on that pattern, I realized maybe I had acquired the skills needed to make this a little bit more appealing and make this more proper, you know? And so I decided to revisit this dress and I also wanted to experiment with some different textures. So we've kind of arrived at what I have here. The first thing that I did do, as I showed you all, was create the um, turtleneck portion. So I um, ended up doing it, I think, pretty, pretty long. Like I actually, the way I measured it, I'm wearing makeup, so I don't want to do that, but I, I wrapped it around my head to make sure that it could fit around my head. So I, I think that's how you do it. I chained the a chain that was like the width that I wanted this to be, and I single crocheted in each row, alternating back loops only for each row to create this like ribbed effect. It's nice and stretchy and it's really, really cute. So very pleased with that. So that is done. That is this very top part. Part of the dress that we're worried about obviously is like I guess the bodice the torso this part right the top of the dress so as I explained I've been working on my own pattern to do the Larika Matoshi heart cutout sweater because if you know that sweater it became quite quite popular I'm pretty sure my Chamberlain was wearing it it is a knit and um, it was really really hard to find like there's not it took a really long time to find a crochet heart pattern that is like a heart with a gap in the middle of that and I did find one, but the way that you crochet it, if it's a top and you crochet like a hole, is it's like this, right? And you would go back and form the heart in the middle. But the problem with that is, as you can see, I'm crocheting my rows horizontally. And if you look at how the Larika Matoshi sweater is formed, it's in the round. And so I wanted a pattern where I could do like a hollowed out heart, but that I would crochet in the round so that I could just continue the sweater seamlessly. And after some like ridiculous searching, I found it. And I was able to kind of adapt that pattern, use some other patterns. I um, give a lot of thanks to, I will put it on the screen, but another YouTuber whose crochet heart sweater pattern that also got really, really popular, um, helped me also just understand how to crochet in the round for the heart to form it into a sweater properly. So here is that, which is what I'll be adapting for this dress. Um, so, there are some things I want to go back in and tweak. Uh, as you can see, my heart here is getting a little lopsided because I did kind of change the number of increases and decreases I did. So I will have to go back in and kind of fix that so that it is not looking a little topsy-turvy, but she's pretty cute. Another thing with this is the sweater is honestly, it's like a scrap sweater for me. So I, it's the end of the year, when that's the beginning of the year, I'm really trying to like clean house with all the yarns that I have. I've been experimenting with like color combos, textures, different yarns, etc, etc. Um, so hopefully this doesn't come out super ugly. But this is where we're at right now. And this is the neckline that I'm forming. And then I'm going to square it out so that we can add in the piece where the shoulders are going to connect. And then I will mirror that for the back, but in a slightly different way. Um, like I said, as you can see, I've made some progress already. So I won't actually get to crochet through this part with you guys and then we can kind of work on the rest of the sweater together um, and go from there. So yeah, that's the update right now.
Hi guys, so like I said, I'm still working on the pattern. So this portion will be a bit more like a crochet vlog as opposed to a full on pattern because there's still some things that I wanna work out and I promise as soon as the pattern is done, I will be sharing it with you all. Um, but I am going to share what I do already have that I feel like is perfected to get you to the point that I'm at. And then what I'm going to do is tell you where to pick up with uh, Shenda DIY's pattern to kind of square out the rest of your shoulder, your sweater to make it into the full on sweater. Um, and hopefully that's helpful. I'm sorry I can't give you guys a full pattern yet. I'm still in school and um, I was working and so I just didn't have as much time as I thought I would to kind of perfect it. We're trying something new for the audio, so I'm really hoping that this works because it's been super duper frustrating. Let me also make sure that I'm in frame. But I have been slowly but surely working on this project. I think I explained where all of my inspirations for this dress came from and kind of how we ended up at where we're at now. But I have almost completed the front of the top. And as I said, I'm still trying to figure out this pattern like as a whole. And so the one issue I keep running into is like my pattern is more fitted and smaller, but the heart, like a heart goes really narrow here. So when it's time to like square out the sides so that I can have like shoulders and stuff, um, it's just always a bit awkward and weird here. You don't really see it when I crochet everything together, but it is still a bit unsatisfactory, shall we say. Not my favorite. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Um, it's trial and error, which is kind of the frustrating part because I'm impatient, but like, I'm gonna figure it out eventually. I just don't know when. Um, so yeah, this is the update on my progress. Really, I need to, I've done the squaring process for this like right side it's kind of hard to hold it up um, and now I just need to repeat and do the same on the left side and yeah it's midnight right now and I got um, so I'm just gonna work on that to be honest for like the next couple of hours and then go to sleep okay <laughs> And for the back of the bodice, I'm just going to recommend that you follow Shinda DIY's pattern. What I did here was very, very similar to Shinda's pattern, uh, save a few tweaks that I made myself. Um, so that's why this is more of a crochet vlog than pattern. Uh, and I will include here, though, uh, the parts of Shinda's pattern that I did because I, I, to make it a more fitted fit, I kind of did subtract some rows because it doesn't need to be as uh, loose of a fit as hers ended up being.
Okay, so um, you're going to, once you crochet both sides together of your top, you're gonna flip it inside, or flip it right side out so that the right sides are facing. I take my yarn, and I usually like to join at this last slip stitch that I did when I was connecting the front sides together. Um, so this is the top shoulder bit, right? I'm gonna connect down here. So I usually connect with a slip stitch. And then chain two. And I'm going to double crochet in each stitch around uh, for this first row. So obviously you're not gonna have like part of these, these are normal Vs from stitches, but there's also parts where it's the sides of a row. Um, so just do your best to um, have an even amount of double crochet. For mine on the first sleeve, I already started over here. This first sleeve, it was about 36 stitches around. And um, I know the colors look a little crazy right now. I'm just hoping for the best. I use scrap yarn, and so I feel like that is the nature of using scrap yarn. But yeah, it's sorry, it's a bit hard for me to crochet from this angle. But as I'm going, I am keeping my tail in front of my hook in the stitch that I go into so that I can also tuck my ends as I go. And I'm gonna double crochet in each stitch around. And here's me trying on the sweater uh, so I could see how the sleeves were fitting after this first round of increases. And I basically did a gradual increase because I wanted my sleeves to kind of bell out in the end. So I just increased uh, in this first row to make sure that the sweater was the circumference that would fit comfortably on my forearm, uh, my bicep area. And then I didn't start doing any major increases until we hit the elbow area and below uh, because when you see the final problem, belt and also as you can see I did start striking it so I alternated about every five rows with one to three rows of the uh, cashmere yarn and I thought it came out really cute.
Thank you.